fat repositioning versus fat removal from lower eyelids. Which is best for me? Hi, I'm a 33 year old and I have little fat bags under my eyes. I had a consultation with two different plastic surgeons. One of them said it will be best to reposition the fat and remove little skin and the second one said that he will remove all the fat via transconjunctival approach as I don't have enough fat to reposition and the recovery and surgery to reposition runs in months. And now I'm confused. Here, I've seen many skilled cosmetic surgeons. I'm requesting an oculoplastic surgeon to please tell me the best approach for me. Thank you for your question. You've submitted photos and you're 33 years old. You're asking uh, to, uh, an oculoplastic surgeon to help you make a decision on whether or not to choose um, one doctor's opinion recommendation, uh, which was to take the fat that's under, under your eyes, reposition it, and remove some skin, or another doctor's opinion who said you don't have um, enough skin to remove and that you and, and to have a routine lower eyelid blepharoplasty from the inside and reduce the fat. Well, uh, again, I am an oculoplastic surgeon. I've been practicing in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years and cosmetic lower eyelid surgery is probably the most common thing we do in addition to several other specialty areas in our practice. I'm going to ha help you understand a little bit of the thinking, um, especially from, a, from somebody who's been in this field for so long, is that the concept of transposition of fat has a natural appeal to the layperson. In other words, the the doctors who, tr who very openly advocate for it appeal to this uh, intuitive belief that taking out fat can make you look hollow and therefore let's take the fat and move it. Now this sa similar logic was um, used a few years ago by another um, set of doctors who believed that the best way to treat under eye bags was to transfer fat, to take fat from another area and put it under the eyes. So as a specialist who takes care of a lot of complications, I have seen transposition patients who have had lumps and irregularities uh, um, uh, below the eyelid and that chronic swelling as you was described in, in your question, very, very common. I've had patients who have fat grafting end up with lumps, irregularities, and both pa types of patients have needed me to revise their surgery. So in the modern world, it is very important, particularly because of the time frame that people need to look their best and get back to their normal life. You have to choose a procedure, in my opinion, that's predictable, and that will allow you to get back to your normal life. So, in my hands, transconjunctival, for a patient like yourself, this procedure I would do as a transconjunctival blepharoplasty, means going from behind the eyelid. I would not do transposition. I would sculpt and reduce the fat so that it doesn't protrude and create a bulge. I would also use adjuvant treatments such as platelet-rich plasma. This is derived from your own blood and we use it routinely to help stimulate and improve skin quality as well as to address skin texture and dark circles under the eyes which are all interrelated. And once that's done, you are done and most people go back to work in less than a week. We also perform these procedures under local anesthesia with light intravenous sedation. That means you're not under general anesthesia. Now, be, having done so much surgery and over for over 20 years, I can tell you that this approach has been successful for me. Now, does that mean that the doctor who recommended transposition is wrong? Not necessarily. I can tell you that a lot of doctors who have claimed to have done transposition, when the patients came to me in my practice for a second opinion, I reviewed their operative reports, etc. I saw no evidence of transposition. Didn't mean they didn't do it, it's that they may have tried to do it and the fat just 
retracted back into its original position. And I would agree with the doctor that there is a certain amount of swelling that a patient has to be prepared for and there has to be a justification. When we look at people and consider the puffiness, we also look at the big picture and look at the interrelationships of volume in the eyelid to cheek junction. They look at volume in the male or submalar area. The whole is greater than the sum of the parts and it's not always the case that one surgery solves all issues. For many patients, particularly male patients, taking away the negative of under eye puffiness is satisfactory enough. Once they don't have the bags under the eyes, they're very happy. And we have the experience to, to uh, validate that, that this, is, this works. So doing a procedure that's predictable, consistently successful, and gets you back to your normal life quickly, in the modern world is more valuable than it's ever been. Patients who have had, like I said, transposition or fat grafting very often do have chronic swelling. And that chronic swelling is very hard to live with. People don't have that kind of tolerance, um, even less now than they've ever had before. So I will uh, suggest that, that you, you, you think this through and discuss this again with the doctors or get additional opinions. But um, from, my, from my perspective, this is be my recommendation. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. And thank you for your question.